My name is Rupert Parchment. I'm a candidate for office here in Colorado. I'm a American. I'm a father of three kids, 16, 13, and five. Acts like a seven-year-old, but the median age would be. And um, a husband. And more importantly, a person who supports the rights of gun ownership. Um, we're here to talk about the inherent racism that's involved in prohibition of guns, red flag legislation, however you want to call it. And for, for me, this is a, a sensitive topic because it has a long history and there seems to be a common underlying theme. And that theme is it's, you're taking away the individual rights of a certain group under the guise of protection. You think of the slave owners who didn't want they didn't want the slaves to own guns because it would be their ability to be independent, to rise up against atrocity, to fight for their own individual rights, when this is the same type of principles our beloved country was founded upon. So for me, when you, when you take it from where it started and even bring it up to now, where the, the same individuals um, are using gun prohibition or creating legislation, Jim Crow-like laws that are, you have to hop through this and answer all of these questions. No, the Second Amendment is quite clear that that right shall not be infringed. And I don't want to sound like I'm regurgitating talking points, but this stuff has meaning. And what many people aren't understanding is you don't see the black community coming out saying, hey, please take our guns, leave us defenseless and unarmed. Because black people, and I'm generalizing here, black people have a history of what happens when you don't have guns. You think of the Tulsa riots, where entire communities were mowed down by a specific political group and ideology, who came in and were jealous that an entire black city in Tulsa was predominantly black and black business owners and very vibrant and successful. So what did they do because of the jealousy? They came in and mowed down those communities. However, there were survivors. And why were there survivors? They had guns to defend themselves. Were they completely successful in rescuing the entire town? Absolutely no, but they at least had a fighting chance. And every time I read about legislation or see on TV where once again, it seems to be the same recurring theme there's a group of white people saying what is good for black people and that they know what's best for black America or any person of color. We're blaming the gun for a real problem of socioeconomic status or poverty. When you look at cities like Chicago and Detroit and you know small cities in our East Orange, New Jersey, pick your, pick your inner city. When you remove jobs and the ability for people to provide and have a and enjoy an American lifestyle, and you you introduce victimhood, blaming, and have these companies run away and leave these cities, and instead guns show up because people got to eat. Everyone's got to eat, and there's good people in all of these communities all over America to, to assume that. There aren't people who have a vested interest in wanting the American dream or just to provide for their families or basic necessities like food, shelter, and clothing. When the gun is introduced, the assumption is that the entire community is all people who are illegal, uh, unlicensed, or, 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 or malevolent gun owners. When there's actually people here who are trying to defend themselves and protect their own property rights from mayhem. So to attack them, when I see the, the larger progressive field to say, oh, we're, you know, they, they're, they're treacherous in their debauchery towards people of color. On one hand, they'll say, well, you suffered through the inherent racism of, of, of slavery and the uh, mental illness that people also have from these communities, you know, is not fair. And we need to do something to wrong those rights. We need to do something to keep them safe. And then they get up on a political stage and they say, well, we need to restrict the rights of people to own guns because they suffer. If someone has mental illness, it's just the right thing to do. So if you're saying that 
8% of black America is number one in PTSD of a population that's 30 million people. You just taken away the gun rights of 3 million black Americans because you're alleging because they suffer from some form of PTSD. But let's open it up just to America. If you look at what they call gun violence and say that everyone suffers from or someone could suffer from any one of the five traumatic stress disorders, be that uh, divorce, loss of a job, death of a family member. Well, by saying that, you're taking away probably 40 percent of Americans taking away their right to, to just the basic need of self-defense. But here's something new. Why not say in every culture, no matter your color, green, black, orange, purple, yellow, whatever, to say we all have a history of hunting, of, get, of being food gatherers. How about if you're dealing with stress or trauma, you use that, use the gun to help you in terms of therapy. They're not suggesting that. Instead, these same racists are saying to a group of people that we know what's best for you, that by taking your ability to defend yourself from people who have stolen weapons and saying, I got a solution. I'm going to give you 25 bucks to buy your gun back so you can screw yourself and be defenseless for someone who stole a gun and is using it against you. Does that make sense? Who's the real racist here? For me, when I look at that, it, we go back to slave quarters. People not being, again, leaving people defenseless. In every culture, people were not allowed the ability of the most basic right of self-defense. In America, we enjoy the First Amendment which is the right to, to free speech. And that is backed up by the Second Amendment. To continue on then and say, racism doesn't exist or that we're going to fix it by going ahead and implementing policies of taking away a right is not only sick and disgusting, it's, it's violent on American. I really appreciate the opportunity. Um, afforded to me to be able to speak and, and share my perspective, uh, please visit the National Association for Gun Rights org to become a member today. Um, if you are a member, you know, thank you so much. And uh, please share this video with some of your friends and hopefully we can get the word out on how we fix racism in this country. And part of that is doing away with red flag gun confiscation type laws or better yet, Jim Crow type legislation. Thank you so much for, for having me, and um, I'm grateful for the opportunity. God bless you all.